So last week, it was announced that the Mets star shortstop Francisco Lindor underwent surgery to remove a bone spur in his right elbow. According to a person with direct knowledge of the situation, Lindor first felt the effect of the injury during spring training. His discomfort reportedly lingered throughout the year, but the 28-year-old shortstop did not want to make it public or stop playing. With noticeable effects to his defense this year, Lindor's average arm strength dipped to a career low 80 exact miles per hour, hovering around the bottom 20% in the league, but still accumulating 11.2 defensive run value at shortstop. Even with his elbow injury, Lindor still put up another great career season, slashing 254, 336, 470, and posting the fourth ever 30 home run, 30 stolen base season in franchise history. Lindor is expected to make a full recovery over the offseason and will be ready for 2024 spring training in Port St. Lucie, Florida. I mean, to have the season he still had offensively with a pull pork elbow, I mean, hell, I mean, it shows, again, some dog in him, and especially what we've seen in the playoffs, you need some dogs. And if this is my highest paid offensive player, and he's not going to cry because of his elbow, and like I said, he didn't want to make this public, we learned about in the offseason, it just shows, again, how good of an offensive year. Like we said, imagine if he didn't was elbow wasn't barking. You know, the defensive metrics may have fallen off, but we don't care about defense. We care about hitting nukes. You get, you get the 30-30 season. Again, the offense was still great. The defense was still, for the most part, solid. Again, he had a few throwing errors, but now we know why that potentially happened. But overall, the season he had, it just, again, a lot more respect, and maybe this is kind of the thing to get him, maybe the fan base off his back for the rare people that hate him for some reason. They're like, hey, this dude doesn't care. Like, you paid him the big bucks. There are guys who, once they get the money, like, all right, and just cruise control. Oh, I got a bad hammy. Oh, I got to take a couple of days off. This dude comes out and posts every day. Again, he, like, he does that weird incident in the dot with in, in L.A. where he got his fucking finger jammed. But besides that, he has been playing every single available game and doesn't want to come out the lineup. And he's been produ- productive. And that's the kind of guy, if this is the kind of guy, like, again, I'm not saying he's Harper Tenzi, but if I'm paying a guy, I want a guy that's playing every day who I could trust to play every day, is not going to make excuses because I hate that shit. We've seen it with Tywell Walker. We've seen it with lower-end players. My franchise player is playing through injuries. And we saw Pete Alonzo do it, but Pete's production tanked from it. Where Lindor has this, we didn't know anything, and he was still producing at a high level. So the respect level for Lindor is already higher than it already was, and he does have that dog in him. I mean, like we said, it makes the good season that he had all the more impressive. Uh, The big thing to me is the fact that he still got the 160 games uh, this year. That's the big thing to me. I mean, you could talk about the 30-30 and all that, but, you know, he played 161 last year. He had the, like Andrew said, the incident in Los Angeles. Played 160 this year. So there was never even, like, a week stretch, a two-week stretch where he ever got to rest. But other than the All-Star break, I mean, he was still out there every single day. Uh, still batted from both sides. It was like, oh, you know, because my elbow, I don't have to bat left-handed. You know, it, there was nothing like that. Um, so the fact that he still was even to play the field, you know, even though his arm wasn't nearly as strong, the fact that he still to do it for the 160, uh, I think all that is just um, very impressive and good for him. You know, I mean, that's what a leader should do, uh, you know, with the contract that he's getting. The guy was, is technically supposed to be a leader because of his experience and his contract. So uh, all good things, you know, uh, I think that luckily it's not a huge injury as far as uh, the bone spur. Not ideal, obviously, but it's, it's nothing absolutely massive where uh, it should be pretty good recovery. I don't really have any concerns going into next season following the procedure. So, you know, props to him. At, at this point, I mean, all I can really say and ask to any Met fan out there is like, is how can you hate this guy at this point? Like, how can you hate Francisco Lindor? At this point, I understand like maybe the batting average is a little too low for the substandard of a typical 70 year old baseball fan. But when you look at it, I mean, this is the guy that you paid to be your main guy, one of the faces of the franchise. Andrew just touched on it. I really do hate when guys play through injuries. I really do. But they hold themselves responsible for anything that they do on the field when they do that. And that's what Francisco Lindor did throughout the entire season. 160 games that he played where he held himself accountable. He didn't make any excuses. He did not shift the blame to anybody when he was playing like shit. He said, I have to be better. And he was better. Did he have the tough stretches? Of course. But overall, I don't really think 
like we all know that like the UCL doesn't really affect the hitting as much, but for me, you still, in my opinion, you still need to get the surgery, still need to get that restructured, obviously. He's a shortstop, different situation. I feel like if he was not 28 years old, this would be a different story. If he was 35 years old, he probably would not be playing 160 games throughout this. Um, but he probably would not be playing 160 60 games if he was 35 years old like Marte and everything. But, I mean, it was just, it was incredible. It was impressive. This team, not to mention, there was tons of scenarios where Lindor could have just sat out plenty of times this season because the team was pretty much going nowhere. But he got out there, he set off an example, and it really shows, in my opinion, where you know you have, like, the work ethic of a few people in this clubhouse of how, just overall, how top-heavy this roster is, once again. Just showing... How many times you see some guys that care and then it just fully falls down to guys who don't give a shit and just stink. And I also will bring it up with the work ethic uh, topic. Tommy Pham was right about Francisco Lindor. Let's be real for a second. I mean, whether you believe him or not, whether you think he's an asshole or whatever, whether you don't like how straightforward he is, I'm pretty sure he was he nailed it with Francisco Lindor, who apparently had this elbow injury throughout the entire goddamn season. I mean, huge respect for Francisco Lindor. I hate when guys play through injuries, but he still held himself accountable, and he still put put himself in a leader position, and that's really what you want to see from your $341 million player. I think there's some Mets fans out there that do owe Lindor an apology, overall, in my opinion, because I feel like... He is the guy that you want to model a lot of your players after. And he is that guy that you want to have out there. Is he a frustrating player? Sure. But overall, you get like one of these big six-win seasons, a great all-around player from someone who pretty much shredded his elbow from day one. How can you argue with that of this guy just wanting the money and basically coasting throughout the season? I feel like this should really change the perspective on Francisco Lindor a lot more as compared to how it was from the beginning.